gig, one of the best parts of the gig is traveling around and seeing all your friends, you know. <laughs> so, uh, we got a lot of that coming up. We got Warren's main Les Paul, his old main Les Paul, what we call the Fat Neck Drop D Les Paul. We have his 335, not the old one, but a copy of it. Uh, an electric 12 string. So let's roll. Two non reverse. Then the, uh, the B section is more strummy. Yeah, I'm doing like a. A lot of coming up. I, I'm just so excited about uh, everything that's coming up this year. It's going to be a good, great year. We've got a great record coming out, and uh, we're here in the studio now in the uh, first week of April recording um, a couple more songs, as many songs as we can actually get for whatever purpose, but it, it's just great to be back in the studio for a week. And then we're on the road for three weeks, and uh, can't wait to do it. Uh, this is another one, another bass that I brought in for Andy to use. It's a, it's a silver tone made by Dan Electro. It's about a '66 silver tone bass, single lipstick tube pickup. It's a wonderful little bass. Hopefully, it's going to make it on the session. The top end's always doing. We have the. Let's do something else going on. Well, the top's always right. You said how it reads. Uh, right. Reads. I've, I've been a, a huge fan of Slam and Drones for years. Uh, I got an endorsement with them um, like in uh, a couple years ago. And basically brought on by the fact that uh, Warren and Allen were with Gibson Guitars, and Slanderlin is a part of the Gibson family, and uh, they welcomed me with open arms. But this is the Gene Krupa signature kit in his classic finish, which is the white marine pearl. In his size, it's a 24-inch bass drum, 24 by 14, 13 by 9, 16 by 16. Robber chicken, which we always must carry with us. Be careful when you're around a robber chicken because his gun is bent. And, of course, we have our old friend, Bert. No, this is Ernie. No, this is Bert. Bert. <laughs> and we, we rarely take it on the road. We use it on a lot of the solo dates. We have Warren's D'Angelico New Yorker. which has the beautiful, large New Yorker style headstock. Beautiful fiddle back maple. When we first walked into Water Music in 1997, this bass drum was hanging on the wall. We picked it up and it said, St. Matt Merrymakers. So Alan Woody looks up at this bass drum and goes, you know, I bet that would sound good on John the Revelator. So we pull it off the wall and hit it, and it was a G. I don't know if it's still a G. At that time, it was tuned to a G. And so John the Revelator happens to be in the key of G. So we recorded that song with me standing in the middle of the room holding this bass drum with a mallet in my hand, Matt here with a drum kit, a vocal mic, and literally I would go, Tell me who was that right? John the Revelator, tell me who was that writer? John the Revelator. And that's the way we recorded it. It was just me singing and playing this bass drum. And when the drums came in, Matt just played live behind me, and I kept playing this guy. And then we overdubbed Woody's uh, crazy part that he played. Man, it wasn't the mandolin, it was the uh, 
whatever that weird Brazilian instrument's called. Farmer will remember the name of it. A tipple. Um, and then I overdubbed the, the slide guitar. But that's an interesting story. And this record, this uh, bass drum is still here, although one head's broken now. We try and find a place to put it on every record, if we can, if we're working at Water Music. When I did Kevin Kenny's record, we put this bass drum on a couple of tracks. It's just good mojo, you know, to have it on there. Good karma.